Thank you. Welcome on stage, Michael C. Donaldson, <laughs> film industry expert and legal expert, Chris Keneally, and Keanu Reeves. Well, thanks for coming. I've got to tell you, I love this film. The first time I saw it, I said, oh, what lucky guys. Look at all the access they have. Then the second time I saw it, I thought, oh, my gosh, they got all these interviews <laughs> and this pile of footage. What did you, how did you? That, was, that, that was Chris's um, problem. Because yeah. I kept saying, let's go interview some more people. And he was <laughs> like, no. <laughs> well, it's a good problem to have. And um, people were amazing. You know, these are busy people, you know, who are making wonderful films and inventing amazing things. And to take, you know, 45 minutes of their time to ask them about film and digital, you know, we kind of felt like we're imposing on them. But, you know, I'm just so grateful that they gave us their time. And, and the editing question, yeah, that was, that was a beast. We had a lot of footage. And, you know, Mike Long and, and Malcolm did a great job on it. And the whole team, I mean, Keanu was giving notes, Chris, our DP, was giving notes, uh, Justin, our producer. So it was a team effort because we had so much great footage. Well, uh, there must have been some interviews even that you weren't able to use at all? Absolutely. We, we probably interviewed about 140 people, and I think there's 69 people who made it into the oh, film. Obvious so question. Okay, so these are people, these are directors that you might like to work for someday. And they're on the cutting room floor. And again. <laughs> what, what, how did you, what, what politically, what that's did you do Chris's, when you? That's Chris's, I'm, 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 I'm producing. That's my fault. Director. That's his fault. <laughs> yeah. Really, though, you, 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 you call these people and say, hey, you didn't make it. Sorry. Not yet. <laughs> we sent them a mug that said side by side. Yeah, we sent mugs. But I mean, one of the things that we hope to do with the, um, with the, you know, the interviews that we, were that we were able to have. I mean, one of the intentions was, for me at least, was to kind of capture what I feel is this moment in time, this transition that might be going on and what's happening with photochemical and, and digital. And I feel like, you know, with all of the technicians and artisans and craftspeople and directors and producers and cinematographers, that we have something here that, you know, we'd like to put together, cut. Because I feel like we have something that's quite unique as a historical record. Yeah. You know, we have something really of this, you know, the past year and a half that, you know, could, you know, I mean, you, you use that example of like, what would it be like if back in the day we could talk to. Yeah, if, if 100 years ago, yeah. you know, someone had done a bunch of interviews with all the top filmmakers, yeah. Lumiere Brothers and Edison and all those people, we'd love to have that. And I feel like we kind of do have that document. This is sort of the highlight reel, a long highlight reel of yeah, that. I, that's, that's the feeling I got when I watched it. My gosh, this is, this captures something in time. I, uh, I, I also, uh, when I looked at it, uh, there's one interview though that I'd love to hear what went on right after. And that's when Lorenzo tells us that this is bad for his kids and you say, wow. And you, there, you got an a audience. Taste maker. You got an audience reaction. You certainly got a reaction from me. But I was dying to know what, was, what happened next. What did happen next? <laughs> I think after wow, um, you have to understand Lorenzo de Bonaventura used to work at Warner Brothers. So he was a studio head. Um, that's not explaining the whole idea. But the idea of taste maker and democratization of film. Um, I don't know, it kind of ties into distribution. It ties into, you know, how are we going, you know, with all of this art made, all these films made, how are they going to be ultimately seen? You know, I mean, we're gonna have all of this content, but it's even now the idea of distribution and um, it's hard to get a film scene. And, and you can see it in different ways. So there's a kind of math to it, like, okay, well now you can watch it you know, you can watch it pirated or you can watch it in this, you know, <laughs> on the internet or this kind of way. But uh, how does a film get seen? I guess maybe that's just a traditional model, but it still seems that that dialogue. And, and I think Lorenzo was talking about 
that, the taste maker, how, who's going to decide what is good and bad, and, which happens all the time and I think a different way now than how he was used to it. Well, Brothers. I think it's part of a, a bigger conversation of, of sort of a bottom-up society. I mean, whether it's the Arab Spring or our last uh, election, uh, Obama wasn't meant to be the Democrat nominee for president of the United States. There was another anointed person by the power. So it's, it's happening in, in every field, fashion, art. So it's, it's, it's odd when you see somebody that smart that doesn't sort of get it, you know. I guess that's why I said, wow, but, <laughs> yeah. but it, 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 it's... I mean, his point was kind of what Greta was saying, too. Like, pe people, there's just such, everyone can make a movie now, so there's a million movies out there. I personally think that's an amazing, wonderful thing, and you can make your own taste, and you can find things, and things are available to us. I think it's great, but I, I understand what, you know, his, his concept is. It's that there's just, you're overwhelmed with, with movies and productions, and, and how are you going to sift it out and find the good stuff, you know? It's... Yeah. I appreciate his honesty. I don't yeah, agree no. with him. Uh, as an actor, though, uh, how's that changed? I mean, your career has sort of traced this from River's Edge, which is one of my favorites, and Matrix. P putting Richard Linklater to one side, who forgot to give you a break. What? What? what how has acting changed with today with people that are now familiar with how to shoot digital, or has it changed? I don't know, Danny Boyle had a good point. It's like, you know, actors don't really care. They just want to go do it. And, and, and that's true. To, I mean, that's true. I mean, you just, you have to, you have to do what you have to do to, in order to do it. Um, but it's, so it's the takes. I mean, it really depends on the situation and the craftspeople. One of the things that uh, Steven Soderbergh said that uh, isn't in the film is he was making, remember he was talking about that point of like, he feels it's not the actors or the filmmakers, it's people in public who are changing with all of these cameras. Mm -hmm. He was saying he feels like the idea of naturalism, he said it, he feels like when he's in public now that he's having, that everyone's self-conscious, everyone's being watched, everyone isn't, I don't know, this kind of performance. He was, it, it, that was kind of a, I was like, really, Stephen? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. I was just like, no. I said, when I look at people, they don't seem natural anymore. They seem like they're all on reality TV. <laughs> you know, with like that way he talks, you know, it's like they're on reality TV. No one's... So that might be a... Hmm. This is so great, because this is like uh, you, you were in the film. And I, I don't look at those as interviews. They're sort of like this conversations, and you're just like so happy to be with these people and soaking in what they're saying. How, how did you prepare well, for those conversations. Well, Chris and I basically had a, a, a general outline that was talking about, uh, coming from the position of, you know, how did you come to digital? What is your history photochemical? Um, you know, just, the questions would be based on, you know, whether they were directors or, or technicians or, um, you know, biographies of their involvement in film and digital. And, um, and then it would be, you know, kind of talking about their work sp specifically um, and we were fortunate enough to, with, I, I think this is a topic that everyone that we were going to was interested in speaking about. And so it ended up being a conversation. It ended up having that kind of back and forth. Yeah, it really, it really felt that way more than a, a normal kind of... Dan Rather? Yes, it wasn't Dan Rather. <laughs> but one of the things we're supposed to do is take questions from the audience. Uh, but I want to start by asking them a question because one of the things when I saw this film there were films that I wanted to go back and see again because of what you were saying about them certainly I'll go back and see Celebration I remember seeing that at Sundance and going eh, you know I didn't. it's okay <laughs> and certainly I'm gonna look at Sin City again these these um, I mean who knew that you were gonna make a film about these films these were just you know part of the Sundance experience so for me uh, I am, uh, in fact, I already did it this morning, put a whole bunch of films on my Netflix list that I'm be great you talk about. So I just want to show a hands. How many people think they will be seeing some of these films because you now know where they fit in the 
in the history of film development. Just very, I'm just curious. Anybody, look at that, will you? That's amazing, that's wonderful. Any of you have questions for either Keanu or Chris? Right in front, black shirt, camera in her hand, hands the camera to her friend, fire away. Thank you, I'm sorry for my voice. I lost it on the flight. First of all, I would like to take, uh, thank all of you for this very interesting documentary. You make a subject which seems, you know, maybe very technical, uh, kind of, you know, relatable and very interesting for all of us. Thank you for that. Thanks. And I have uh, three questions to Koyano. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I will try to make okay. it short. <laughs> um, your last movie, Henry's Crime, shot on, uh, shot on film. Uh, was it a conscious decision to shot, you know, the Henry's Crime on the film? And secondly, uh, I heard actually we were working on another project called Passengers. And a story like Passengers, a science fiction romance, do you think it could be shot like rotos with the rotoscoping technique used in the scanner darkly, which was one of my favorite movies? And thirdly, my last question, as an actor, you are always the one who are, you know, giving the interviews. How was it, you know, reversing the roles, you know, interviewing your fellow actors, directors, negrovers? Was it fun? Are you planning to do it more? Thank you. Did you got those? <laughs> I did, yeah. Uh, passengers is interesting as a rotoscoping idea. Um, probably have to do that digitally because uh, of the, s the scale and how much we could afford. Anyway, it's a long story. It's that balance between, which is what Jason Cleo was talking about, like uh, how much can you spend for the idea that you have? You know, so it's like, anyway. Um, I really enjoyed uh, doing the interviews, uh, conversations. Um, and I mean, it was interesting. Remember when we were going to go interview George Lucas? It was like, okay, we're going to go meet Zeus. Okay. <laughs> oh, what do you ask Zeus? Okay, Zeus. Ah, uh, remember that? He <laughs> was like, okay. Um, okay, you're going to go interview Cameron. Okay. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> you know, been there, done everything, know everything. Next. Um, and but they were they were great. Um, and Henry's Crime, yeah, you know, I, I wasn't really involved in terms of the format decision, but uh, the director definitely wanted to shoot on film. Very good. Uh, next question, us, uh, I don't even know where the mics are. Right back there, t-shirt, sort of uh, gray t-shirt, white t-shirt. Yes, you. He looks around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi there. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but we actually have Tasta Dean in the audience here, and her most recent turbine hall exhibition, sort of, you know, there's a, there's a very strong parallel um, between the film that you guys have made. So I sort of wanted to ask if um, there was any sort of cross-referencing, like if you were aware of Tasta Dean's film and that in any way affected your work, and also, I mean, maybe if Tasta didn't mind, if she had any thoughts she might like to share on your work. Yeah, sure. Um, the, uh, in t when we were working, when Chris and I were working on the film, I mean this, uh, I think this is one of those kind of, is it a gestalt moment? Is this like a, <laughs> it's a moment in time where, you know, I think it's, it's, it is, it's a cross section, a moment in time where, you know, digital imaging and, and, and tech and photochemical film, there is a transition going on. And, and there's much to speak about that. Much, 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 and different, lots of points of view. Chris, you? Well, yeah, I was aware of, of the project. I haven't seen it, but you know, there were articles that came out, and I think you were actually involved a, a little bit with the quote. I had a, I had a quote in it, yeah. yeah. Your next film is in, the, you're, you're, you're working on a project in China. Is that gonna be on film or digital? Digital, baby. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, another question in the back. There's one near the aisle. But here. I wish it was photochemical. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> but it's. I don't mind that it's digital. It's very exciting. <laughs> it's all exciting. Sorry. I'm just. As 